Alright everybody, uh, well welcome back, welcome back, or welcome, uh, maybe I shouldn't be presumptuous that this is your, not your first video, maybe I shouldn't be so presumptuous. <laughs> Uh, I know why you're here. You're here because you've been asked to factor and solve a quadratic, and I titled the video, Factoring and Solving a Quadratic. So here you are. So let's talk about that topic. It's got two words. One says factor, the other says solve. So let's first factor, and then let's solve. Why not, right? So first move to factor is to solve this puzzle, okay? You're trying to find two numbers, in this case that multiply into negative uh, 22. This number is al always a times c, okay? It's always the leading coefficient minus the times the constant. So two times negative 11 is negative 22. And then in the middle we wanna add to negative nine. Sometimes this is represented like this. Sometimes we use this as our, what the puzzle looks like. And we go, we go multiply plus, and we put the negative 22 here and the negative 9 there. So we'll just solve them both. First thing we have to do is just figure out what are these two numbers that multiply to negative 22 but add to negative 9. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't have that right on the, the tip of my tongue. So let's look. The strategy when you don't uh, immediately see the answer, the strategy is to go for that multiplication first because there are trillions and trillions, might I say infinite, ways to add to negative nine using integers. We could be here all day. Let me start. Negative nine plus negative one. Negative eight plus negative two. 10 plus negative 21. No, 10 plus negative 19, okay? But I could be here all day, there'd be an infinite amount. But there's only a finite uh, numbers that are gonna multiply if you're stuck using integers. This is not gonna be infinite. That's why we start there. Now let's just start listing them. Um, negative two times 11. Two times negative 11. One times 22. Negative one. Positive one times negative 22. I think that's to all of them. So what I like to do is I like to just kind of make another column where I go ahead and I add the two numbers. And I'm really looking for the ones that add to this term right here. Let us proceed. Negative two, if I added 11, I would get to positive nine. If I subtracted 11, I'd get to negative nine. Negative one, if I added 22, would get to 21. And if I subtracted 22 from one, I get negative 21. And so we look here, and then we have our winner, because we want a negative nine, so that's our winner, is gonna be two and negative 11, okay? So two and negative 11 are the answers to this puzzle. Now is where we get a bit of a divergence. We have two really solid contenders for methods on how to factor this. Contender number one is factor by grouping, and that says this, it says, okay, you rewrite this thing as two x squared, but you split the middle term, so we're not gonna write negative nine x, we're gonna write two plus negative 11 x. So plus two x minus 11 x, because we split the negative nine to be two minus 11, and then we have negative 11 at the end, and it still equals zero. Now if you're gonna factor by grouping, the grouping is you take the front two terms and you take the back two terms. Now assuming this puzzle has a solution, this step will always work. It will always get you to the answer. This is the stopping point. If that puzzle doesn't have an answer, then it's not factorable. The puzzle has to have a solution, okay? It's gotta have a solution. All right, so let's look at this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take out a two x, we're gonna factor by greatest common factor. So between two x squared and two x, I'm gonna take out a two x. And when I do, what would be left over is an x because 2x times x is 2x squared and plus one. This is tricky because you think, oh, I took out the 2x, so there's nothing left. No, there's a one there because when you multiply, you should get back to the last step. Multiplying and factoring are like inverses of each other. So if you, if you take, uh, if you multiply in, you should get back to the same answer you did uh, before you factored. Okay, so 2x times 1 is 2x. 
That's a, I like to think of that as a subtraction sign. So it's still there. Between 11x and negative 11, or minus 11, I'm gonna take out an 11. Now what's left over is an x. This has to become a plus one because for that similar reason to over here, this is when you multiply in, you get negative 11 times positive one is negative 11. So we always gotta make sure that when we get back to here, that we have the, uh, when we multiply, we get back to the previous step. Now, you know you got it right if these two are exactly the same. And what I used to tell my classes, uh, I, haven't, I haven't done it in a couple years, I was like, if you're taking an exam and these two numbers are the same, I literally want you to get up on your desk and shout, I know I'm getting this problem right because these two are the same. So I'll demonstrate. You're sitting there. Oh, yes! And you go, yes, I know I got it right. I know I got it right because my two binomials are the same. And in your mind, you're thinking that he didn't actually. Yeah, I did. And only one student's taken me up on it. And to this day, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen uh, when he did that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's little things like that are why I love teaching. I love those moments. I don't try to take, I don't try to take everything too seriously. All right, so we're done there. I want to show you that other factoring method. What you do, it's called the box method. You make a box. So it's after you solve the puzzle, you put the lead term in the top left. You put the constant in the bottom right. And you split the middle term again. You split those x's. It doesn't matter uh, where they go as far as whether this is here or here. And now you think more in a multiplication attitude. You have to say to yourself, I, have, I need two numbers to multiply to give me 2x squared. Because we always multiply row to column. So if I go 2x times x, I get 2x squared. Now you just got to ask yourself, okay, 2x times something gives me 2x. That something has to be a 1. Now we got to multiply this row to this column. So something times x gives me negative 11x. That's got to be a negative 11. And then you just check to make sure this is correct. Negative 11 times 1 is negative 11. And then the answer is on the outside of the boxes, like, like so. Okay, but we still haven't solved nothing. We just have an equation that looks different. All we've done so far is say that this and this are equivalent. These two expressions, ignoring the equal sign, right? This expression and this expression are equivalent. But when it equals 0, what value of x makes that true? And to do that, we're going to use the zero product property. So let me get started. You down with ZPP? That's where you say, yeah, you know me. So I'll try it again. You down with ZPP? Yeah, you know me. You down with ZPP? Yeah, you know me. Who's down with ZPP? Every last homie. Naughty by nature. Late, what, early 90s hip hop right there? A little OPP action. So here it's ZPP, which means zero product property. It's right here, sports fans. It's right here, I'm gonna put it right here in the middle. A times B equals zero. If that's true, then I only care about two conditions. I only care about when A equals zero, but I write A twice, and when B is equal to zero. So let's go get it. This is analogous, uh, this is something times something else, so this binomial times that binomial. So x plus one is equal to zero, x is equal to negative one. And over here we get two x minus one is equal to zero, so we need to add 11 to both sides. Two x is equal to positive 11, and then divide by two. So our answers are negative one and uh, 11 divided by two. Uh, this is just math, people. That's all it is. It's nothing more and it's nothing less. It's math. Okay? Um, this is a really smart technique. Really what we say is that traditional methods of solving for x don't work here because we can't combine these two terms. And that's normally how we solve for x. We combine it into one. Okay? So we can't do that. So what we do is we say, huh, well, factoring creates multiplication, right? It creates essentially this action. And then we take advantage of the fact that if that equals zero, then we have power. 
that we can just set whatever's in this parentheses equal to zero, and we can set whatever's in that parentheses equal to zero. Uh, wherever this found you in your day, I hope you um, are having a good one. I hope you had a good breakfast. Let me end it there. I hope you had a good breakfast today. Take care.